Speaking of moves, let's talk about Kefir and Taram. So we filmed a little bit earlier last week, didn't we? Um, so this came out a, 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 just after me and Neil had, had spoken on on last week's show from Miguel Delaney, the chief football writer of The Independent. says, Liverpool identified Legends Son as a solution to their midfield problem. Kefir and Taram is seen by Jürgen Klopp's perfect answer to the Liverpool... So, sorry, perfect answer to the issue after Liverpool missed out on Jude Bellingham. Goes on to say, um, Liverpool are looking at OGC Mises Kefir and Taram as an option for their midfield this summer. Jürgen Klopp is seeking to overhaul the city of the team and is seeking at least two players haven't missed out on Borussia Dortmund's Jude Bellingham. Goes on to say, Liverpool wants one with energy and running, the ability to carry out the Germans' demands tactically um, and assessments as Taram that he fits that bill after this considerable development in the French League. It's another name to add to the mix. There's been plenty of them. We've spoken about plenty of them here on this show. Um, we've spoken before about maybe it, it might just be a list because Liverpool, had, Liverpool aren't going to get to a situation where, like last year with sure many, it was him or nobody. They're not really in the the, the comfortable position of that they need to get bodies in. It, it, yeah. Does it feel like that might be this way? Does it, he, he does sit somewhere on a list of, of potential options. Yeah, I think so. I think... <laughs> I think everyone's on the list almost, isn't he? Everyone under the age of 27 who plays in midfield at a, at a decent level is 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 a potential player for Liverpool. I mean, there's other. I mean, we haven't. I know he's not on the agenda here, but there was a story on the weekend about Calvin Phillips, wasn't there? You know, <laughs> I, did, being, I didn't put that on the agenda. Being, being in there, you know, there's possibilities everywhere. I I would. My arg, not my argument, but my sort of thing would. I think Liverpool would want a bit more of a sure thing, and I think. Kefram, Kefram Taram is clearly a player of huge potential, isn't he? You know, he's 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 playing on a good side in 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 the French league. You know, playing have the pride of playing alongside Ross Barkley France, and and, um, <laughs> and Aaron Ramsey and Nicolas Pepe and the likes. Play for France, yeah. He's obviously got huge potential. It's whether they believe that potential is is nailed on, and they did with with Chiumeni. They obviously did with Bellingham, um, despite not being able to get them. Or is he is he someone who just they know exactly what they'll get from him if they put him straight into this Liverpool team? I think there's there's enough doubt there, isn't there? Obviously, you know, not not to go down the sort of soccer sati route of player doesn't play in England, so he can't handle the Premier League. Plenty of players can come in and, and, and immediately handle it. But that would be the question. Can he can he go straight into this team or does he become a player that, you know, maybe may you know, huge potential, but maybe not, or maybe maybe he does. Um but I, I would definitely the price, the age the profile, the type of player he is, the potential that he's got makes him someone who's definitely on on a list. You know that Liverpool would be looking at. There's a lot, a lot of players. A lot, like you wouldn't believe how many players. Are, you know, you, you you hear banded about around Liverpool. We talk about a lot of them on this show. Look, there's some underneath. Obviously, now there's another one we're going to talk about in a sec. I don't think you'd rule any of them out, really, beyond maybe <laughs> anyone who's over 28 or anyone who's going to cost 100. And, Fifty million pounds. Like anyone not new, J- anyone not yeah. named Drew Bellingham. Yeah, at this point in time. Yeah. yeah, you know, I think Taram's in in a maybe category. I think that would that would be the way. There's but there's a lot in that maybe category, and it depends again. You know, there's stories. You know, we go back to another player, but Mason Mount. The stories this week that Chelsea are going to have face to face talks with, with him, or, or have held face to face talks. They're going to try and make a play to to keep him. You know, that has a knock on effect, doesn't it? If they're successful, if they're not successful. There's a chance Liverpool get get the deal done. If they are successful, of course, that's off the table. So you move down the list, don't you? And okay, who was on? Who was underneath there? Okay, you know, others. Mateus Nunes was was high on the list early in the season, or was was pretty pretty much you know a big target. That seems to have moved a little bit away. Who was underneath that that name? You know, there's a lot of a lot of moving parts. I think I think obviously we'll see. Things start to solidify and, and and you know become a bit more clear. I think in the next month, you know, I think they're going to get into position, aren't they? Where they want to be in, uh, they want to be ready to move. I think Jurgen confirmed that the um, the return date for for pre season, the eighth of July. I think they want to have people through the door by then. They don't want to be in a position where it's like, right, okay, if we don't get him, who are we going to get? I think they want to be in a position where they know what they're getting. So I think May we'll see a lot of things start to become a little bit more clear, whether it'll involve. Mr. Chiram, I don't know. Maybe he can bring his brother as well. I yeah, think yeah. his brother's uh, gonna have a move in the summer. Yeah, no, no, Marcus, if, if you can't get one guy out of the yeah, out of the I'd have Lillian. Uh, there was times this season when I would have had his dad. <laughs> 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 he's, still got, he's still probably got a game for us yet. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let's move it on then because 
on the on the Jao Palini stuff, he's the next name I want to speak to. Miguel Delaney also named him in his story. Dom King wrote something similar, saying he's a name on a list. Um, I was looking before, obviously, at the when we, when we went to the Tram thing. What one thing he can do, he, he can play as like that number six mm. type role, but he can also play as an eight. Um, Palini had again Fulham. He's been predominantly more yeah, of, that, more of, of the holder. of the holder midfielder. Um, a lot of the links that Liverpool have been, you know. You're talking your Mount and your Graven Birches and your McAllisters and your Bellinghams. It, they've, it, it's all of it's been ahead of what you'd call number sixes. Um, with Fabinho's form being what it was, for, it, it felt like maybe them getting a six was like um, almost a necessity, but there weren't too many names banded about. But now we're starting to hear a couple of them. Do you think they are going to play sign somebody who can maybe take his place and he becomes more of an option? I, 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 Obviously, Stefan Pachetic is, is also in this mix, but Trent. Trent, Trent's playing effectively doing the same job now. Um, but it, I don't know. There's, there's two more names now on today's show who, who are more like who can be more your holding players, which is a bit of a move away from the other conversations we've had in recent weeks. Yeah, I think that I think it depends on what they feel of Fabinho's decline this season. Really, is it is it a permanent one? Is it a a, a manageable one? And you know. A, a, a consequence of other things, systems and injuries and, you know, fatigue, whatever. I think if you were to sign Jao Polina, you're putting Fabinho on the chopping block, aren't you? You know, you're putting you're putting him in a position where it's like, okay, he, I mean, it's easy to... If, let, let's say Curtis Jones. If, if Liverpool signed Mason Mount, you, you say, okay, that, that's someone who plays sort of similar to you, but... You know, you could play with him. Like, you could both play in the team. You, you could alternate. I think if you're signing Polina, you're saying to Fabinho... In a bit. Well, yeah, or, or like, you know, if you're not on it, there's your place gone. You know, it's it, it's that he he looks he looks a good player. I, I like him right. a lot. I like both of the, the lads who play in midfield for Fulham. I know he's not a, a particularly, you know, I don't think Liverpool are going to sign him. But Harrison Reed, I've seen him play a few times this season. Thought, wow, what a what a good season he's had. And and him alongside and Palinias, likewise. I think they I think Fulham have been a really good side this season and play lovely football. Um, Palinia really ticks a fair few boxes, doesn't he? If you think of in the age, he's got pretty good experience. He's not he's not a kid, is he? He's, he's you know mid twenties. He, he's got the Portuguese sort of background, a good competitive element to it. He's got a, a bit of bite in his game, hasn't he? You know, he gets a lot of bookings, um, wins a lot of tackles, that kind of thing. Potentially a a player who you could see moving up the up the league. Um, after after a year at, at a club like Fulham, having a, a year to acclimatise and doing well in the meantime, but that would be my question: is you know, who who's your or where's your where's your mind at with Fabinho? Is if you're Liverpool, are you, are you in the position of now we're in trouble? He he's he's in he's under pressure, potentially even even would he leave the club? You've got Jordan Henderson there. I think Jordan's looking. He's struggling, idea. but would would he be revitalised by being moved into that that sixth position? Possibly, you've, as you say, you've got Bajetic, who is a long term option in there. Played well this season, obviously, but this is an eighteen year old kid we're talking about. So let's we'll, we'll we'll put a pin in that one for a bit. And then you've got Trent moving in, into that position where I don't think it's any sort of coincidence that probably Fabinho. I'm saying Fabinho is looking a bit better. Is it because he's just got someone right next to him to give the ball to, and and you know he just has to worry about sort of where he is off the ball, possibly. Yeah. But if that's going to continue, then okay, that might be fine, might not it? So there's a few few considerations there for that. I I probably wouldn't have expected Liverpool to go and buy a an out and out Fabinho replacement. I think ideally it'll be someone who who's happy further forward. But maybe if you change the system or you play a different way. Whether that's with Henderson in there, or whether it's with Trent in there, or whether it's with you know four two three one or whatever, can can sort of do a little bit of everything in there. It's that way, like, and then you go back to Tehran with that, and then maybe Ryan Graven Bear. Yeah. The, maybe they're the two. That is the thing, and it's almost replacing Jordan Henderson, someone who can play as an eight. But if you need to be a, your deputy to Fabinho I, as number six, yeah, they, that does that does make a bit. I think I think yeah, and also someone who can who's got the legs to to do the. The ugly way. I mean, Klopp's made a big thing in recent weeks, hasn't he? You've heard him say it. The ticket, the, the ticket into the team is what you do off the ball. There's a, that's why Curtis Jones is playing, obviously. It's why Jota's ahead of Nunes. It's actually. why Jota's, yeah. It's why Nunes isn't playing. You know, never mind who who plays in his in his place. It's definitely why Jota's playing. You know, it's why Jordan Henderson's still on the side, even though he's struggling, because Jurgen believes that they'll do the 
the side to side work in midfield. They'll do the, the the space filling. They'll do the second balls. They'll they'll you know be part of the press. It needs to be someone like that, doesn't it? It needs to be someone like Ener- who's got energy in it. You know, I've, there's, there's players. And I might look stupid on this, but there's players I've seen linked with Liverpool. Ruben Neves might be a good example of that. Where I think mm, I'm not sure about that. I think that changes a lot of what Liverpool do if if they've got a Ruben Neves and then maybe a little bit Tillemans as well. When you see that, you think, mm, that doesn't sort of maybe I'm maybe I'm just missing a lot. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time, but. It, it doesn't tally with sort of what, what the manager's saying. The manager's saying, I want us to be get back to this way of playing. So when you see Mason Mount linked, even Conor Gallagher to a degree, you, you sort of say, yeah, OK, I, I see what he's getting at. I see, he wants, he just wants more more legs and a bit more quality in, in there. I think Palina, you know, Palina Turam, different types of players, obviously, different, different profiles. But they definitely... They definitely look like they're good enough to play for a you know a bigger club and a better club. Um, sorry, better club, a terrible, terrible phrase to use. Um, but a bigger club and a, a more ambitious club or a, a club fighting for, at the, you know higher up the table. So we'll see what comes of it. But there's a, there's like a lot of names. Listen, we'll be on next week. There'll be another name. There'll be another face next to mine on that. Um, boxing post that we have at the start. I'm sure it's the, 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 that's the money to hit. Even, I mean, <laughs> yeah. We did say like, fine last week that I might be the star, but I, even I'm starting to concede that might not be the case. Now, um, yeah. before we wrap up on the midfield thing, then you, I, have, I thought it was a really good point you made before, but you know, being ready to play, not only ready to come in, but ready to play. You know, it wouldn't be the you know McAllister, Mount, Palinia, maybe, maybe that's the the mould as well. Where it's like you. you you're not worried about them adapting to the Premier League. You've seen it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, there, there might still be some doubts. I think Sam's a great player. I think he'll have no problem fitting in. Graven Bitch, I don't know because he hasn't played for a season. But, I mean, yeah, if Jürgen's looking, you know, your bankers, you've got to pay a bit more for Premier League players. You know, you can say those, you can throw that into the mix as well. Like, I always thought this was Alex Ferguson was really, really good sometimes. He used to buy Prem, like, lads who were boss in the Premier League and then the, and more often than not, he'd come in and be just as good. Um, is, there, is there a chance where Liverpool go and get three in the field? Is there someone on all three of them have been signed from? From teams in England, it wouldn't, I, I, it wouldn't be the biggest shock for me. No, it wouldn't amaze me, especially with the homegrown elements as yeah, well yeah, yeah. to consider. Uh, I do think that there will be at least one player that you that would would add to that quota. Um, and yeah, if you look at the way the Premier League's developed as well, it it's become so strong, hasn't it? In terms of you know the the, the level of player really and the level of tactical sort of. Every team, um, pretty sophistication. Much got one. Every team's got one. You think, wow, he's yeah, he's yeah. And he's and you, you you look. I mean, I know that I know that not every not every team in the Premier League is excellent. Obviously, there's a few poor ones, but there's there's a lot of good players within within those teams. You go, do you know what? He's 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 a really good player, and, and they're all they're all pretty much set up, you know, quite well, aren't they? You know, they they, they all like to play, but there's, there's a lot who who are, who are good disruptors as well. And I think that maybe does factor into this that you know it, it's. Maybe a certain demand for, is required to play in the Premier League, and and having that under your belt already proven is a big tick in, in a box. You know, of course, the, the cross in the box is the money side of it, and you know, I sort of, you know, another player we, we can we can throw into this, but R- Romeo Lavia was was linked with Liverpool, I think, wasn't he from Southampton? And you know, you think about him last summer, he never played. I don't think he'd ever played a, a, a professional game even, and. By the end of the summer, it was talked that oh god, Chelsea were going to try and sign it, you know, get him out of Southampton before he'd even sort of set, got his feet under him. To have that that knowledge that someone can can have a season, even if it's a difficult season, even if it's a season where their, their team struggled, to have that knowledge that you know what, when you put them in the Premier League against De Bruyne or Bernardo Silva or Odegaard or whoever Bruno Fernandez, they can they can handle it, they can mix it. It's a big, it's a big plus. Uh, so yeah, I wouldn't be amazed at all if Liverpool sort of. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say they, they narrowed the search into that department of oh, it's got to be Premier League proven. But I think I wouldn't be amazed at all if they, if that was a sort of, you know, a decisive factor in some of the decisions that they make where they go, do you know what? We've got that option there. We've got that option. The money's where it is, but we know what we're getting from whoever it is. You know that he's ready to play in the Premier League week in and week out. It's a, it can only be a plus plus. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed that part of Jano Insights. If you want to check out the show in its entirety, head on over to redmenplus.com. Sign up as a monthly club captain and use the code Jano, J-O-U-R-N-O, and you can get it for 99p a month for the first three months, but you've only got until midnight on April 30th to get that code in. It won't be valid after that. So head on over there right now, 
redmenplus.com sign up as a monthly club captain use that code JNO and check out the entire episode see you there Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed the show. Did you know that if you go over to redmenplus.com and sign up as a Club Legend subscriber, I will personally email you every single month with a new code which gets you 20% off at redmenmerch.com. That's a no-brainer. Go and do it.